On the last edition of ATW Weekend, we joined Edmonton presenter Alex Smythe as he explored the boreal forest with Albert Carvinen. That's right. Uh, Albert is a naturalist and a wildlife filmmaker who happens to be the father of our Edmonton producer, Ava. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. That is great. Well, today we join Alex and Albert again in northern Alberta. This time they're exploring by canoe on Amisk Lake. Do you enjoy being on the water? Yeah, especially when it's mixed with scotch in a, in a tumbler. <laughs> but, but seriously, I don't, I don't think there's really a need for me to ask you that question, Victoria, uh, given your background as a medal-winning Canadian Paralympic rower. For sure, of course. I love being on the water. And especially for people with vision loss, I think it's really liberating. Well, all I know is uh, canoeing on a remote lake on a beautiful evening sounds like the perfect night to me. I definitely agree. And having a local expert like Albert there is a huge bonus. That's why I like canoeing. It's so peaceful, so quiet, unobtrusive. Oh, fish just popped the head here. Oh. So Albert, can you uh, tell me how did the lake get its name? Well, I guess the, uh, the Cree, they gave it the name beaver. They trapped a lot of beaver here. Northwest Fur Trade Company operated in a lot of these areas. In fact, they had a place in Athabasca, not far from here, okay. where they used to bring in the furs. The fur traders, the couriers de bois. But the fur, beaver fur, was, was an important item of trade in those years. So this is a typical northern lake with pike, perch, walleye, burbot, and now that's a sparrow. Can you tell me what types of uh, trees these are that are kind of surrounding the water? What we're seeing around here is this, this wall of aspen, and in front of it is a lot of shrubs, a, a smaller growth. And the reason for that is that the beavers have eaten the trees from the water's edge to the taller poplars over there. And where will we uh, might find the beavers? We're coming up to a beaver's lodge around the point there. Albert, there's a beaver over there. Beaver plays a very important role in terms of creating habitats, wetlands. There's a tern flying there, black tern. We have the yellow pond lily here, an interesting plant. I notice that they're kind of fairly large, circular green uh, leaves. A lot of the birds sometimes walk on those leaves. Each year they're in the same place, more or less. The leaves are almost the size of a dinner plate, and the yellow flower attracts a lot of the insects here on the lake. Yeah, the leaves or lily pads create almost a floating island for the birds and insects. So Albert, what's that in front of us over there? There's a pelican. The pelican's quite big. I'd say larger than a swan or goose. Its big orange beak sure stands out against its white body. Okay, why don't we go and see if we can try to get a closer look there. Sure. The pelicans come to the lake to feed on the fish. And so how many are there on this uh, lake? Area? Oh, we've had uh, sometimes hundreds of them. Oh, really? When you have good supply of fish, then of course more pelicans come. They're flying long distances uh, to get here, the real uh, Large colonies are much further north. Oh, the pelican's flying away. There. Oh, that very graceful takeoff. Strong wing beats. And they just kind of soar through the yeah. air. So what was that, Albert? A loon. The eerie cry of the loon, symbol of the northern forests and lakesides. So Albert, I gotta say, this is really beautiful being on this lake here. It's yeah. so quiet, so pristine. I can definitely see why you love it out here, and I kinda remember why I loved uh, canoeing and paddling so much. This is truly, truly gorgeous. I'm so happy I'm out here again. I love being on the water. Wow, that was fascinating. If you've ever seen a beaver hut in the wild with the beavers beavering about, it's, it's, it's spellbinding. 
It really is. Well, I guess that's understandable then why the lake was named after the Cree word for beaver. Uh, what a gorgeous lake to live on. And if you caught the story we did with Albert guiding us through the boreal forest by foot, then you might remember that he and his wife actually live in a log house and have dedicated 145 acres of land to conservation. I think it's safe to say that Alex got quite the education about the boreal forest on this trip. Absolutely. I'd love to make a trip out there. Oh, it'd be so much fun. So great. Maybe, maybe Labor Day weekend. That's a great idea. Just remember the bug spray and sunscreen. <laughs> Smart thinking.